Hello, so welcome to the next talk. Um, it's a talk from Arnulf Crystal, and uh, he should be here now and um, joining us live, but unfortunately he can't join. He's in the train. We saw him for a minute, but the, the internet is not so good there. So we have his talk um, recorded and will broadcast it soon. And Anuf will be in the chat, so you can meet him in the conference room and ask questions there. So his talk is uh, The Borked Supply Change, and it's about the telecom and how the telecom brings FOSS projects into stable production. Um, some words about Anuf before we start. So Most of you might know Arnulf Crystal. He was one of the founders of OSGEO in 2006. He is an OSGEO advocate and co-founder of OSGEO. He's working at Terrestris at the moment and he is a senior consultant there for Telecom AG. He is uh, working and um, on the other side he has Metaspatial, um, the platform to coordinate smart mapping and he is a scrum master also. So uh, welcome to his talk and hope to see Arnulf in the chat. Hello, my name is Arnulf Christel and I should be in Buenos Aires now, but unfortunately it's not possible. So I wanted to do this live, but again, this is not possible because they just canceled my night train. So I have to take an earlier train and I'm not really sure that it will work over the internet connection that we get on the train. So better I record this. Senectinia posters, GeoServer, Shogun, open layers, and many more goodies in the cloud. It's a talk by Arnold Crystal, also known as Seven. What are my roots? I am a carpenter and former director of president of Geo, entrepreneur, and Buddhist scholar. And I'm bored, so beware, we will listen to you. My affiliations I'm working for Terrestris, GmbH, and CoKG and metaspatial.com, which is a consulting for agile product management, and Mundialis, they are the roster guys, Terrestris is the vector guys, they do the web viewing, and Mundialis is the operation, and obviously Borg Inc. So if you have an issue with uh, artificial intelligence, please come to me and I will help. Should be in Buenos Aires now, but unfortunately it's not possible. So I wanted to do this live, but again, this is not possible because they just canceled my night train. So I have to take an earlier train.
my affiliations i'm working for terrestrius gmbh and co kg and metaspatial.com which is a consulting for agile product management and mundialis they are the roster guys terrestrius is the vector guys they do the web viewing and mundialis the operation and obviously bork inc so if you have an issue with a artificial intelligence please come to me and i will help you so we have nine points in an open source tool chain and we'll look at them so first question is what do we want to do next where are the pain points in the current way we're doing things and we design a new process i will show in a prototyping demo what is going on then we find the right open source tools to make it better decide on an architecture putting the pieces together results in a demo again and seven of nine just because i had nine points so i thought i should add this ninth point what do we want to do we want to roll out fiber optics in all of germany because germany is too slow we have uh, no fiber optics due to political strangeties in the late 80s and 90s so everything we have is copper which is nice but slow and uh, therefore we really have to speed up the planning process otherwise we're going to be lost how to do that? What are the tasks? What do you need to do to roll out fiber optics? First, you need to collect data and then you need to analyze and process the data and use the data to position the distributor boxes, which need to have a certain distance from each other. Then find potential trenches where you can actually put the fiber optics and generate permit application forms because only then you can start to dig and actually put the fiber optics into the ground. And all of this planning process should be automated. Where are the current pain points? It currently is on-site manual planning. So that means people actually have to walk to a place and take pictures of potential positions for collector boxes. And there is limited scaling options because you need so many people to drive around and do this that it's just not possible with the current people we have. There is still a lack of data because Germany is not fully open data and we have legacy systems as you can imagine in a big telecom provider in the basement there is really old stuff running there. We have waterfall project management and um, maybe we need a new mindset. This will be a little excursion. I'll go into the manifesto for agile software development which they have decided is the right way to go forward. And what we do here is we put individuals over interactions, um, pardon me, individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And we need comprehensive documentation, but we think that working software is more important. We want customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and we want to respond to change instead of strictly following a plan. That is, while there is value on the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. And as you can imagine, this really is a new mindset. And for a big old company with many, many people and lots of hierarchies and bosses and stuff, it's not easy to implement. But I think we succeeded well. So let's go to the prototyping and have a look at what we have and this will be a kind of live demo so i'll switch to uh, post QGIS, and we'll see what you always see when you start with gis project in the wild it's an open street map wms and um, just to show this is hamburg a few data that we use for input we obviously need uh, the buildings where we want to put the glass fiber and we need to have the landlord land parcels and then we need to know who owns which part so this is probably public and this is probably private and all the other ones we're not quite sure so there's some risk in doing that but that's all the data that german data is currently showing us so this is part of the basic data that we need and um, then we have more data which is a lot, lot, a lot more, a lot more detailed. That's this data, and this has been collected by a surface car, which actually actually runs on the ground, and we've seen this before. And um, these are objects that have been detected by a KNN, which is the Künstliches Neuronales Netzwerk, which is an artificial neural network, and this is also detected different uh, surface types. 
So we have objects and we have surface types. And this is great. And uh, all the planning areas that we are going to use um, have been traveled with the surface car. But it's not enough because, as you can see in the back here, no car can drive there, so we have no data. So additionally, we have added orthophoto classification, which complements the KNN data here. And you can see there is some overlap in the data, but there's also some differences. So um, obviously, we also have um, orthophoto data. Let's take out the other data so that we can see it. Here we go. And if we go into a detailed situation like this, then we can see that the KNN data is quite detailed here. You can see this is asphalt and this is concrete data. And these are the, let's take out the digital order photos again. These are the floors. And what we need is the trenches. And the trenches have to have a certain distance from the outside of the places in connection to the, where are they? You can see this is really a slow process if you want to do it animally. This one here. This is the road area. And um, the road area from the road area here you have to measure. And this is going to be, where is my measure tool? I lost it. There it is. This needs to be around 40 centimeters. So from here to there, it's around 70 centimeters. And that's the distance which needs to be taken from the outside of a building. And the building is going to be here. Can't put the building here. So it's a conflation of building data and of cadastral data and of road data. And all of on top of this, you can you can now see in the earth photo how it all comes together. Come on, earth photo. There you are. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. And after the prototyping, we know what we're doing. We're trying to position those collector boxes and we're trying to find out which is the best place to put trenching. Um, we need to design the new process because what we do in the trenching is we collect data and collect even more data and collect even more data and then conflate this and process this and calculate and automate everything. What do we have to calculate? We have to calculate what the cost of these different lines is going to be. So if we look at the different costs here, then you can see that depending on the surface, it's more expensive or less expensive to dig a road there, uh, to dig a trench for a fiber optic cable there. So this information is basically deciding then which path you're going to take when you dig your new trenches. Um, Okay, data, collecting data. Open data in the states of Germany is a little not so nice because there are, some of them is open, some of them is partly closed, some of them is really closed. And so it's a little difficult to get an overview. In the places where we can't get any data or we don't get any open data, we obviously go to take some open street map data. And where we can't get those um, for the processing of the surfaces, we also need uh, orthophotos. And then we have this surface car, which drives around and has cameras here for panorama pictures, which we'll see later, and also a LiDAR scanner at the back and a high precision GPS so that we will know where we are. Okay, now we have the data and we need the tools. What tools do we need? I think this is the easy one. Curious you have seen. It's great for prototyping, ETL, GDR, GDR, OGR, and all other tools. And yes, we have some FME in there. There is Grass and Actinia. There was an Actinia workshop in the beginning of this conference. The provisioning happens with GeoServer and GeoNetwork, and viewing and planning is done with Shogun Fiber Maps, which is based on open layers, and operating the whole thing in CICD with Kubernetes, monitoring Kibana, Grafana, and all the other stuff you get in the cloud. So let's look at the spatial data infrastructure. And there is some OSM data coming in here with the OSM importer into a PostGIS database. This is like our core vector database. There's cadastral survey data converted with PostNAS or with FME to go into the PostGIS database. And it's provided with GeoServer as a geospatial service. 
The metadata is collected by Geo Network Open Source and metadata, and later on, Fiber Maps will use in the web client this metadata to actually access this service to get to this data. So it's all connected. If you look at it at the processing per perspective, you have T surface data which comes in through the Künstliches Neuronales Netzwerk, which is the artificial neural network, which will produce outcome data, which is resulting in the classified surface cover. And the same for all the photos, which are calculated with Gactinia, which uh, leverages grass modules to actually do this. And all of this, if it is a vector result, also ends up in the PostGIS database. Next is the planning and distributor boxes and potential trenches. trenches. And this happens in Fiber Maps, which is a web client application, which accesses these geospatial services, which take the data coming out of here. And it actually also can remote control Actinia, which can then pull new T for surface data through KNN, FME, classified surface cover put in the results here so that Fiber Maps can continue to collect this because we don't calculate all of Germany all the time. As you've seen, it's very detailed data and that would probably take half a year on very big machines and then the data is already outdated. So this is a on-demand process, processing chain. Okay, designing the architecture. The OTC Telecom Cloud was a given. No Azure, no AWS, it's in Telecom Cloud. And we had a Red Hat OpenShift, which is currently transitioning back to Kubernetes. We have GitLab and Ansible and Puppet, and we provisioned the whole thing with Terraform, which has been replaced by Steep recently. The whole thing is deployed with Helm. And if we put the things together, it looks like this. We have a setup in Workbench in GitLab and Open Telegram Cloud with OpenStack. Then we provision with Terraform, lots of virtual machines. In these, we have Red Hat OpenShift with a master infrastructure nodes and Bastion IDM SFTP proxy and AppDB and GeoDB. These are configured with Ansible and Puppet. And then we deploy them with Helm so that we get Docker images. And the whole thing is a CICD pipeline where devs push stuff into the app repository, which is compiled, unit tested image, build, pushed image into the Magenta Trusted Registry. And on the other side, the ops push the prod and staging SDI, which comes from the pulled images into dev in staging and prod, gives deploy diff and lint. So the whole thing is running with a workbench in GitLab. It's really a nice setup. But it took about two years, and I don't know how many years of work um, in person days to actually get this up and running. So, fiber optics rollout, planning on speed, and this is going to be a small live demo, and after that I should be done. So, this is how it looks like when you plan these things, and all of these little triangles and green dots and gray dots are collector boxes, and we're going to now move these collector boxes. And this is the T-surface data, which has been collected with uh, LiDAR data and panorama images. And we'll have a look at one of those panorama images here. So we start the Standortsicherung, which is the place where you can put the collector boxes and you can see that there is some images. So we want to have a look at the image in the real world. So what we do is we move over to Fiber D 3D. This is the position down there where this one is we're looking at. And when we switch to Fiber D 3D, this is a different web application. It's fired up now. And it loads the point cloud and the panorama images and positions this object in the middle of it. So this object is actually a vector data image, which is projected into the panorama images at the right point. This is it. You can move around in the image and we can also um, there you can see the cone of the direction where we're looking at. And if we zoom into the picture, then we will also see, now we're zooming into the picture, that the cone is adjusting its size and direction to show where we're actually currently looking at. So we always have the orientation in the map. If we move to a different position, we can just click there and we'll see a different view of the next road crossing that we are here. And this is it. And I will stop here for a moment. If 
because now you can see the T surface card. This is the T surface card which takes the data with the uh, lidar scanner and the cameras taking the pictures. And for a moment you will see now the point cloud. There it is. And then all the pictures which are stitched on top so that you have a nice 3D view. Now we will go back to the um, box that we have just looked at and we will move the box to a new position. It's wrongly positioned in the garage, so we will take it out and put it inside, outside of the garage again. Uh, there we go. I'm sorry that this is a recording, but I was afraid that it wouldn't work for a presentation. It's not nice. So once we've positioned it there, we can go to the next step and store this information if we were happy with the position. Now we can take pictures. This is like walking there and actually taking a camera and taking a picture of the place where we want to put the box, but the box is already there, which is pretty cool. And for the permit, we need different perspectives, so we move a few meters onwards and then turn around and look better at the box and take the next picture. And again, it's like positioning, we can move it and we can even zoom in or out, whatever we need to get the right perspective for the permit, which we will later produce. Here you can now see the old and the new position and from where it comes. We want to save these pictures, so now we're processing the pictures and putting them back in and here they show up. So this is our processing interface. And now we want to make a report, so we select this collector box to produce a report. And this report is a PDF which gets sent to the public administration, which will then uh, evaluate whether the position of this box is allowed at the current phase where it is shown. So once you get the PDF, you can open it up and you see here that you have a number, the postal code, and the name of the address and this is the box. There is quite a few different sizes, standard sizes of boxes that you can position. And you have an overview map and this is the two pictures where you can see the before and after and the before and after of this position. And this is what actually is enough for the um, uh, community to allow whether to put this uh, box in the corresponding place or not. So let's fast forward to another perspective. This is now looking at another place in uh, where you don't have positioning. It's just you can you go any place that you've traveled. It's like Google Street View. It's not much of a difference. I think the quality is much more detailed, obviously. So then Let's have a look at the planning process itself. So this is the planning process and if we go further, we zoom further in, then we can see the potential trenches in action. So this is the trenches, this is the lines that we need and this is the connection right into the building. And these one out here, they have been calculated on the basis of this other data that we've seen before. So. That was a long talk and I'm coming to an end. This is the team. Uh, currently it's changing every now and then because we're in an agile process. There's uh, Terrestris, Mundialis, Metaspatial, Fraunhofer, Geomare, camp to camp this is all open source guys. And there's Conterra, that's an Esri company, which is okay. We can work with them together. So it's a conflation of different technologies. Thanks a lot to the team and thanks a lot for your attention. And I hope you can enjoy Phosphor G 2021. See you next time. Bye bye. Okay, so thanks a lot, Anul, for your great um, presentation showing the platform and the challenges that are going on here. Big applause for Arnulf, please. And um, as I mentioned before, he cannot be here. Um, so you can meet him in the chat. And if you have questions, you're welcome to ask questions there. 
So one question was posted in the questions section. I forwarded it to the chat and um, have a safe journey, Arnulf, and hope to see you in person at the next conference and um, all the best. And we are looking forward to the next presentation in a minute. So stay in our room to hear about traffic in Buenos Aires shortly. <laughs>